Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Skipper's Briefing for the Rolex Fastnet Race and this very historic occasion of being the 50th edition. I'm Jeremy Wilton, the Chief Executive of the Royal Ocean Racing Club, and welcome to our Cows Clubhouse. And for those of you who didn't, uh, weren't here last night for the crew party, this is the same place where you were dancing, pogoing, enjoying yourselves, and I hope you enjoyed the experience because we are going to go very shortly, um, going into the winter months, a redevelopment of the clubhouse. So hopefully when you're all back here in 2025, you'll see a new, expanded, more attractive space to enjoy, party, and come to our skipper's briefing. Just very quickly to, exp uh, to explain how we're going to run the next half an hour or so. Very shortly, I'll introduce our race manager, Steve Cole, who's also the race director for this 50th edition of the, of the Rolex Fastnet race. Following Steve's very important information, so please be listening in and be very aware because we have got some interesting weather coming through um, during the race. And that then takes us on to Christian Dumas, who will be doing, who's our meteorologist for the race, and will be doing a weather briefing and giving you some views about strategy for what's going to be a very interesting uh, four, four to five days for the majority of the crews. And then after Christian's finished, then to, to just give a wrap up, we've got our Commodore, Mr. James Neville. So rather than get on to the interesting parts and get away from the boring part being me, I'll pass you over to Steve. Jeremy, thank you very much. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, we'll try and rattle through this fairly quickly. The mic doesn't work. That's not my fault. <laughs> okay, better? <laughs> Blinder. <clears throat> this one? This one good? Okay. Whee! It would have been better without it working. Um, okay, so we'll rattle through uh, fairly quickly because the, uh, the information that we are most interested in, and definitely all you guys, is going to come from Christian. Yes. Uh, so, um, we, issued we issued an amendment, issued an amendment yesterday, yesterday at 6 o'clock, uh, reversing, reversing the start order for the uh, RC boats. boats. Yeah, uh, I'll, with I'll the weather forecast, uh, obviously we felt it prudent to uh, get the, the French boats French out in, in speed order, so hopefully everybody has seen that one. Um, we've, also we've also changed the identity gates. Uh, last time when it was windy, we had quite a lot of uh, issues with the gate boats in the middle of the Solent. So the middle gate boat is now round in Norris. Uh, additionally to that, the mockers, the class 40s, and the multi-holes, uh, you don't need to go through the gate before the start. So effectively trying to make it as safe as possible for everyone in what is a uh, hectic couple of hours before the race start. Uh, so that's the amendment. Those are your start times. Hopefully everybody has um, seen those on the amendment. Uh, we've slightly compressed the start times, uh, removed the 20 minute starts down to 15, as we don't need so much safety gap now they're going out in speed, in speed order. Just a reminder, it's up to you. It's not compulsory. <laughs> we hope you enjoy it, but we want everyone to be safe. Um, a lot of you have already filled in your uh, Cell Race HQ information, so thank you for that. There are a few outstanding uh, tasks still to be completed and a reasonable amount of trackers to be collected. So it would help us greatly if you could uh, finish off the information on Cell Race HQ and then collect your tracker. Uh, we've got them in Cowles and Hamble now, obviously a little bit late for Sherberg. If any of you have seen the trackers, you'll see the massive boats are about to leave Sherbrooke to come across to join you. If you can check your onboard mobile numbers and your sat phone numbers on your boat are correct on Cell Race HQ. Um, and just check them periodically, periodically through the race. Um, you never know, someone might need your help or you may need someone's help. So, before we start, please, uh, AOS switched on, working correctly and displaying the race name. Your tracker outside, uh, on the back of the boat, pointing to the sky. Um, nothing between that and the satellite. So, not, in, uh, not down below, not in your bunk, not in the pub, not in your car. Um, back of your boat, facing the sky. 
and then all your crew uh, match on the boat's Cerace account. Um, you should have all now received uh, our automated WhatsApp um, asking you to just reply with your crew number. So this is an automated system. Uh, you should have a WhatsApp would we'll ask you for your crew number. You just simply type the number of your crew on board. One, two, well, no, not one, two to whatever, and reply. If there are any issues, the system will hopefully sort it out automatically. If not, um, then, you know, call us at the race office or pop in. Um, if you're not on WhatsApp or you haven't received a message, uh, then just please text the mobile number that's on the front of your sailing instructions uh, with the boat name and crew number, and we'll, uh, we'll do the, the next bit in the, in the race office. Okay, so the identity gates, we've now got, still got three. Uh, one in the north, which is by reach for the boats coming out of Hamble. Uh, we've moved the middle one to uh, Norris, uh, so it gives boats a chance to get around there, go through the gate, and then you've got a bit of shelter from the um, forecasted winds to sort yourself out. And we have the south one still at Cows Corinthian. Radio comms for the race start, uh, quite important. We will be broadcasting all race information on channel 77, um, but we will not be responding on that channel. So if you want to call the race committee with any issues, please call on channel 72. I'll press the clicker now. I don't, so I'm trying to read things a long way away for an old person. There we go. Um, so call the, call the race committee on channel 72 and we'll talk to you on that channel. But 77 will be race information from, from the race committee to the boats. Okay, start. Interesting one. We're using the, uh, the test rule uh, for this event. There are starts with quite a lot of boats in it. Um, in a nutshell, I'm sure you all will understand what this means. But basically, if you're OCS, during the last 60 seconds before the start or at the start, you'll receive a time penalty. Uh, it's a two-hour time penalty, uh, which is designed to encourage you not to be over the start. Um, for the first few starts, you are marginally against the tide, so a little bit easier. The last three or four starts will definitely be with the tide, so please take that into account when you, uh, when you do your pings and do your uh, check runs in. TSSs. Uh, so basically, we're using Appendix TS Section B. Um, just be aware that that also applies to intent. And what that means is uh, the ships that are using the TSSs are not always aware of what racing yachts are intending to do. You know on your yacht that you're going to go right up to the edge of TSS and tack away. The ships don't know that. Okay, so that Appendix B deals with that. Um, the TSS is that are identified in the sailing instructions are hard obstructions. So if you're in there, you're a 10% penalty. So I'd strongly suggest that you give it at least 10 metres. 10 metres out would be good. Uh, you've got the four TSSs, Land's End, South of Sillies, West of Sillies, and the Fastnet Rock. And according to uh, top information from our West Country uh, competitors, there are lots, and I mean lots, of lobster pots in the vicinity of Land's End and the Longship. So... Uh, Nothing to do with the sailing instructions, but a bit of information. Uh, Cow's waterfront obstruction. So there is essentially a uh, spectator area that is marked from row M, which is the row of um, moorings that all the boats are currently moored up on the green. That'll be marked either end and in the middle by a Rolex buoy. Uh, and that is your first obstruction from the start and very quickly after the start. So bear that in mind when you're planning your start, what you're going to do in the first three or four tacks, because um, that obstruction will come across you very quickly. We will try and line up the inner distance mark, which is also a Rolex buoy, in the same line as the obstruction buoys. So to give you a clue from the start. Uh, 
Uh, this is the, the word I was very careful with, Penennis head. Um, so all outlying rocks and islets within eight miles of Penennis head. That doesn't mean that you have to stay eight miles outside of Penennis head. You just have to stay outside of any rocks and islets that are within the eight miles. You can dive in and out, but you must go outside of any of the rocks. Uh, the finish. So the finish, um, Fort Chavanac across to uh, Fort de l'Ouest. Um, we would ask you that when you're about five miles out, please to keep a listening watch on VHF channel 72. Uh, it's a commercial port, Cherbourg. It's very busy with commercial traffic, fishing fleets, cross-channel ferries. Um, so beware of the traffic ex exiting um, the entrance that you're trying to finish into, basically. Sound signals for aid only. Don't constitute the finish line. We will try and gun the at least the first uh, three boats in each class, um, but don't rely on it. Once you've finished, um, and when Ocean, if Ocean 1, which is the call sign at the finish, is not too busy, uh, you can confirm your finish on channel 72 if you want to, and then await further instructions. The plan is that you'll be handed over to the event berthing team, uh, who will be on channel 77, and they will tell you or show you where your berth is um, as you go in. The Port Chantrine Marina uh, will monitor channel 09, but they are not directly operating the berthing. The berthing has been operated directly by a specific berthing team, and they'll be on channel 77 once you finish the race. Uh, speed limit, eight knots in the Petit Vard. If there's any mockers here, or uh, old teams who were doing about 38 at the end of the last one. Um, please keep a, a listening watch on channel 12 in the, uh, in the harbour. Uh, any issues, contact the, contact the harbour master. There's, touch wood, not many issues normally. Uh, all the customs immigration information for you can be found on the OMB, on Cellrace HQ. Most of that is pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. And then once you've finished, um, you'll be sent a link for your online declaration. So complete that once you've finished. And then please return the tracker to the race office in Sherberg. If any of you are looping and coming back to Cowes, uh, you'll be able to drop your tracker off at, at this clubhouse. Okay. Media, most important for Louis, otherwise you'll have nothing to do for the week. Um, let us know how you're getting on. There's an amazing amount of interest uh, in the race from all over the world. As you know, we've got um, 49 countries represented in the race. Uh, so send in your vi photos, videos, content. Um, the WhatsApp team is there. They'll be pleased to hear your stories. Finally, uh, contact in Sherberg is the same in Cows, phone number or the Ocean One number which is the number that's printed on the front of your signing instructions. Now, the important bit. Um, are there any questions before we hear what words of wisdom from Christian? What? <laughs> okay. Um, we'll be here um, at the clubhouse for a little while after the briefing, and we're still in the, in the race office all afternoon, so if you think of something, please feel free to call or um, pop in and see us. If not, hand to... Okay. Christian, give them the good news. Thank you very much. Good morning. <laughs> uh, yeah. Do you want me to click it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we can go to the next one. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you very much. So, the weather for the start, on the start line, conditions should be okay. Uh, probably 20 to 25 knots of wind, uh, maybe gusts up to 30 knots. As it has been said before, the current is going to be uh, against you uh, at the st well, for the first starts, and then it will be pushing you. So when the current will be reversed, it will increase a little bit the wind speed also. So 
remember about this. Uh, at the needles, when you get to the needles, I cannot see my the other screen. Can I switch on this one also? <laughs> Sorry, because I cannot read the numbers and I don't. No, well, okay. I'd say it should be okay. <laughs> so when you get in the needles channel, the wind is going to increase. Remember, the current is going out, so the current will be uh, against the wind, so it will increase even more the wind speed. So expect uh, around 30 to 35 knots, maybe gusts up to 40 knots in the needles uh, in the needles channel. So there is an escape route if you want to go in Christchurch Bay. You can go just south of First Point and go in uh, Christchurch Bay if you want to avoid the very strong wind. And so also the sea state will be quite bad because we expect for the first boats maybe between 1.5 to 2.5 meters for the total wave height. And for the last boats, around 5 or 6 p.m., it should be about 2.5 meters. So the sea state is going to deteriorate as, times go, as time goes on. So be careful with this. Uh, very rough conditions probably in the... Uh, oh, sorry, yeah, okay. Uh, so the situation, we have a low pressure, uh, which is uh, northwest of uh, Ireland. Uh, so that's uh, for the... S at the oh, s sorry, uh, the slides are a little too far away. So <laughs> Can you just uh, move a little bit? <laughs> yeah, so thanks you very much. And so the, I cannot go, yeah, up. I have to go slowly. <laughs> Doesn't switch. Yeah, here it is. And so we have um, the front coming from the west, so the low pressure is northwest uh, of Ireland, and we have a front coming uh, in in the south of this low pressure, which is moving from the west to the east. Uh, and uh, this front is going to be over the fleet probably around uh, midnight. So that's at uh, uh, 13 uh, British time, so that time of the start. I'll try to switch, yeah. So we see that at uh, 18, the front has been moving uh, over the south of England. It should be raining, so pro we hope not to have rain for the start, but after the start, it will s as you move west, it will start raining. And the sea state, as you can see on the right-hand side of the screen, tends to deteriorate as the front uh, approaches. Uh, during the front should be over the fleet during the night, uh, probably, so around mid, depending on the boats, but I would say between uh, 11 p.m. and 2 a.m. And after this front, the weather conditions are going to, going to improve very quickly. The, there should be a little right shift, and the sea state should also be better in the west. So the further you go in the west in the bay, in Lime Bay, the better the conditions should be, uh, well, the better the sea state should be in the west of the bay. So we expect a right shift and better conditions in the west of uh, Lime Bay. So the front is moving uh, east afterwards. The sea state and the wind should the sea state should improve quite quickly uh, Sunday morning, and the wind should decrease quite rapidly on Sunday morning, probably around 20 knots or something like this. Uh, then we have a second front coming in from the uh, from the north, or trough or front, depending on how you call it. And it's coming from the north and with westerly winds in its south. And the, east, uh, the wind is shif shifting north or even northeast uh, behind this uh, trough or front. And so we see here, so the routings are just a few routings of a fast boat, a uh, medium-sized boat and a small boat, just to give the, an approximate position of the, the fleet. So we see that this front is moving south, and behind this front you have a right shift, the big right shift. The RC boat should get the shift probably around Land's End. So it's uh, tactically or on a strategic point of view, it's probably going to be an important choice. Uh, well, how you deal with this front is probably going to be important. It should be raining probably a little bit, but not as much as what you'll have tomorrow evening. So <laughs> conditions should be OK. <laughs> and so the front is moving south. Uh, all the fleet will end up in the north of this front. Uh, on some of the models, the wind shifts all the way to the northeast, and so it comes out from the St. George Canal between Ireland and uh, Scotland. And so, the, depending on the models, the wind shifts north-northwest, north or even northeast. 
So it could be that some of the boats end up downwind going to the fastnet uh, after this run. Uh, the models still diverge on this point, so keep an eye on this. Uh, next uh, slide. So we have this, the front has been moving away. We have a ridge coming from the northwest. Uh, so a ridge, which is a uh, high pressure ridge, which is the extension of the Azores High. And as it comes, the, the wind will tend to uh, shift left. So the wind will back. And up. here it, up. no, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, here it is. And so the, the ridge is moving uh, east, and as it moves east, the wind will back slowly. Ahead of the ridge, the wind will be from the northwest, and behind the, behind the ridge, the wind will be from the southwest. And in the ridge, you'll have very light twin conditions. And, uh, and so when the wind shifts from the northwest to the west and the southwest, when it's west, it could be very light, about five, five to 10 knots, maybe even less. And then the ridge moves, Along the along the course moves east. Uh, uh, the first boats will be in Cherbourg already, and so will not be concerned with this ridge. They'll finish in the northwesterly winds, and the last boat will finish behind this ridge in the southwesterly winds. And as time goes on, oh, but, uh, so <laughs> uh, yeah, so. If I go, yeah, so here we have the ridge, and then behind the ridge, as the ridge moves away, uh, yeah, we have another low pressure, so I've called this low pressure L2, and this low pressure has a warm front ahead of it, a cold front behind it, and the wind tends to increase quite a lot, maybe up to 25 knots in this warm front, westerly winds, so there will be a shift from the southwest to the west in this warm front, we don't expect big rain squalls, or it's a warm front, so the wind is more stable than a, in a cold front. But still, you could have up to 25 knots. And when you s north of the Cascade, um, well, south of the Cascade TSS, and north of the um, or Rigny for the French and Alderney for the English, the current can be quite strong, up to five, six knots. And when the current will be against you, so against the wind, it will uh, increase the wind speed, so remember about this. So if you expect 25 knots on the grip files, it could be 30, 32 knots, and probably 35 knots in the, in the gusts. And the sea state will deteriorate also. It will be very, uh, very rough, <laughs> probably, when the current will be against the, the wind. So be careful with this when the current will be strong. And then the cold front comes behind, but all the fleet should be in Sherbrooke before the cold front comes in. So the last boats should probably finish uh, ahead of the cold front, so between the warm and the cold uh, front in westerly winds. And uh, it should be nice downwind sailing for the, uh, for the end. Uh, on the last slide, uh, if I can switch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So here we, we see the front moving away. And on the last slide, yeah, I've put the... Um, all the data you can uh, use for the so the grip files you can use for the race. Uh, so the best uh, high resolution grip files are the UKV model from uh, the UK Met Office and the Arom probably from the French Met Office. So that's a higher resolution model you can get. And then you have other models, well, plenty of models. For the current, you have different sources of. Uh, Files you can use, so you can use Titec, Barotropic is a very high resolution model, my Ocean IBI. Uh, for the wind models, for if you don't, if you want uh, smaller files to download, you can download Arpege or Icon EU, probably from. So Arpege is from the French Med Office, and Icon EU is a German model. Any question about the weather conditions? <laughs> No. Yeah. Are there any criteria by which you will delay the start, postpone the start? Uh, I will not, not answer this question. <laughs> um, if the forecast deteriorated considerably, then yes, we would look at it. But at the moment, um, all, the, all the information is saying that yeah, it's going to be a, a gnarly night. Um, but at the moment, we, uh, we believe it's still uh, safe to go. So at the moment, no. 
the wind should decrease quite rapidly once the front goes through and the sea state will improve rapidly. So after midnight, the conditions should be much, much better. After Portland for the last boats, probably. <laughs> What he wants to know is when, how does it apply to a J122? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, probably on, uh, the, on Wednesday. I cannot see the slides from here <laughs> very, very well, but it's on the, uh, the afternoon of the 26th. So on Wednesday afternoon and uh, during the night afterwards. From, uh, so probably for the last, last boat, yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Christian. Uh, so we have a few words now from our uh, Commodore. Uh, James Neville, um, and here he is. Thank, thank you, Steve. Um, so, welcome to the uh, Rolex Fastnote Race 2023, the 50th edition of this race. Um, Thank you to Steve and his team um, and all the people who are making it such a great race. Steve, I'm sure you're going to do a fantastic job for us. And to Christian, thank you for your advice. You've been there all season. All I took away from that is the models don't match, i.e. we don't know what's going to happen. And I suggest you bring all your sales, I think was the other thing I got out of that. Um, just at this point, we know this is the Rolex Fastnet race. Um, Rolex has been involved with this race for over 20 years now. They've added considerably to the profile of the race and their support for the media. And I think a big, big round of applause for Rolex and all the support they have for us. So it, this is going to be amazing. We have over 450 boats on the start line, more than 3,000 competitors from 49 countries. So it's going to be a terrific race and, and, and absolutely massive. Um, I want to just share a few thoughts for myself and for you, for you in terms of the race. Please be really careful at the start. It's going to be breezy. We heard that. We had a lot of damage in the last start, and we don't want people to end the race there, and it can be extremely dangerous. So please stay away from the start line if it's not your start line. Please keep a lookout as we, as we start the race. We've, we've taken some precautions in changing the starting order, but you know, just, just keep your eyes open, avoid each other. Absolutely crucial. Um, very good. I'm going to speak louder. Um, Another thing we've learned from this, this season is the TSS. We've had, in fact, we had in the last race, we've had a number of incidents this race. If you're not sure where the TSS is, please ask the race office. Please make sure you know where they are. Please do not go in there. You will not be happy with the penalty you will receive if you do go in there and they're, they're on the lookout. Um, and, um, um, and, then, and then just a bit of thought, what are we doing? I've got my team down on the boat now. Waterproofing, preparing the boat, making sure that we're ready for the first 24 hours of the race, make sure things are where you want them to be, because it's not going to be easy. Um, after that, it's about reliability. We're thinking about how do we make sure we finish this race, and then how do we make sure we're ready to push when the conditions allow. So very excited about that. It's been two years preparation. For most people here, it's a culmination of that. So. Fair winds, safe sailing, and see you in Cherbourg. Thank you, Commodore. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Christian. And just very quickly to wrap up, four quick points. Um, firstly, the whole of the presentation today, including Christian's slides, you can view on YouTube, on the YouTube channel, on the Rock TV uh, YouTube channel, so it can all be seen there. For all of you, please, at the end of the race, do pay a visit into Cherbourg. There is a lot of entertainment planned, bands playing. There's a great crew bar, and you're going to have a lot of fun there. So again, please, if you've got the time, I encourage you to, to, to visit Cherbourg. With regards to your race trackers, as Steve mentioned, please head to Race Control 
well, when you actually get to Sherberg, there's a big marquee, big words on the front of it, race control, and that's where you can hand in your tracker and get any uh, further information you need. And again, just to reiterate that point about the starts that the Commodore said, it's going to be a bit windy out there for the starts. You know, please be on pole for your starts, but if it's not your start, please hold back and don't interfere with the start before you. And that's very important with regards to your safety when you're leaving out through the West Solent. And again, just to summarise, thank you very much. It's great that you're all here for this 50th edition of the Rolex Fastnet race, and you're going to be part of history for two reasons. One is the 50th, and two, by the number of entries we have, it will be the biggest offshore ocean race in the world at any time. So again, thank you very much for being part of it. And I can't thank uh, our team here at Rourke enough, from the guys managing the clubhouse here in Cowes, for all Steve and the race team, to the media team, all our volunteers, and everyone that supports the race. We can't do it without everyone here. So it's very similar to racing a yacht. It's about teamwork, communication, endeavour, and perseverance. So again, thank you very much. Best of luck, fair winds, and good sailing. Thank you.